in our patchwork duo. And that was really a very strong thematic that we were uh, wanting to, to stay with for the sort of the first, um, uh, the first sort of collection of repertoire, I guess you'd say. You know, we're doing a lot of reading and talking about Helen Creighton and how we might approach this piece and was it gonna be about her and her work, um, which we rejected pretty early on. Um, because people have done that kind of work about her before, and we wanted to find a way to just present these songs, revisit them, and also bring back those voices from the past into a performance. So this seemed like the perfect opportunity with this funding to expand it and bring in other cultures that Helen Creighton had collected from, you know, that we really thought had an important voice. We knew we wanted to have each culture represented, but we didn't know that we wanted all women. I don't think we had recognized that ourselves, but as we were sort of working through things, we realized how central that was. If It's not an overt perspective, perhaps, in the work itself, but it gives a certain sensibility um, to the piece, I believe, and of course the conversations are different when it's all women in the room. You know what, I really loved it when we each took a line. That was really beautiful. It kind of even extends that sense of positivity and support. Mm -hmm. And we're like, mm, you know, we're all... Kind of, I, th I think that, but I also think it's the only thing she's singing in the show. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So it really should be about her singing. That's right. There's that unifying force I think, of us all being women, so that we've got the distinctive um, experience, but also the collective experience. As bright as amber, upon me she did gaze, with her ruby lips and her cherry cheeks that lost their Yeah, I found it incredibly uh, brave of these three young women to come and join in this project. It was pretty vague as to what it was going to be. We had a sort of an outline. Um, the premise was just to bring people together to sing these Helly Creighton songs, but the conversations that came out of that, putting these cultures together, and the time where we are right now, I think post the Truth and Reconciliation, um, report and really how it you know at least my perception and other people's perception is that we've not moved very far forward with that um just brought other conversations up like just the difficulty and you know um, and if you're a person of african nova scotia background or if you're a Mi'kmaq person, you're visible in that way and how that changes your relationship with the world. And this really, it just opened up into that almost straight away we were doing our workshop in Lake Ainsley. Um, Kirsten was with us, uh, had arrived from Halifax and 
she said the most incredibly poignant thing to me. You know, she, we were just sitting at the table and she said, you know, I, I don't know what language my people would have spoken. I don't even know what country they would have come from. And as someone who's really spent a lot of time exploring a culture of her roots or in a, getting deep into a song tradition, that seemed to me to be like an incredible loss. My culture was beaten out of me and hidden so far under the ground that I live life knowing that I will never know what my language would have been. My language was extracted from my tongue and poured into a filthy glass and withheld from me while I spent centuries searching for it in the blazing hot sun. My name means hitchhiking home to East Preston because a nigger better be in the house before sundown or else. My name means building and founding a daycare center to take care of our children because they sure as hell won't. My name means going to school without a roof and can still read and write circles around squares. My name means resilience, redefinition in spite of, even though, and I will, any way, anyhow. My name is Strong. I'm an African woman. The language I speak is truth. I'm an African woman. And home just happens to be where my heart is. I am an African woman. Okay. Um, I'm gonna sit at the welcome table. song really can heal people. We, we all have the ability to connect through music and through song. It's universal. Being able to make people understand or feel something just through your voice um, really opens up an opportunity for um, understanding and truth, respect, um, because it's, it's one thing for me to stand up in front of a group of people and begin to talk about Indian residential schools, but it's another thing to be able to sing something where they're able to connect and I can reach, and I can sing to their heart and to their soul. And that's where he died.
residential school was a, a, a very horrific time or event that happened in our Canadian timeline, and it's a very tragic part of our history. This photograph here was taken at the Indian Residential School in Shubenacadie. Here are children from the Mi'kmaq communities that were taken away from their homes, their communities, their families, and their parents. They didn't get to be held and rocked and sung to by their mothers. That was something that was taken away from them. Last week, we performed in Antigonish, and my great aunt attended, and she's 75 years old. And um, she had contacted my mother after the show to explain that in all of her years, she has heard so many versions of the Mi'kmaq lullaby, but she never heard the one that her mother sang to her when she was a little girl until that night. And she said when she heard it, she could feel her mother and she could hear her mother and it was such a, a comforting feeling for her. So Helen Creighton's collection of these songs from my people is, is, is bridging those, those relationships that have been lost and uh, I'm very grateful um, to have learned about Helen Creighton and now these songs have um, and will become a part of my journey as a song carrier. Ba ba be do we do wa ba ba be do we do wa e bi te di ja ba ba be do we do we do. That's what I think. And that's what you say to your baby. Yeah. Quand j'étais sur mon père, petite à la maison, petite à la maison, je m'en vais à la fontaine pour remplir mon cuche en manitant. Manitant, les filles en Les filles à manitant. Je m'en vais à la fontaine pour. I am very, very thankful that I was able to be a part of this beautiful, beautiful project and meet these wonderful ladies. I learned that as an Acadian woman, I have. A lot of things to be thankful for. I know where my ancestors came from. I know the language they spoke. I know about their traditions, and the culture, the traditions they celebrated and different events that they did. Um, and I know this because I live it in my everyday life. I grew up in a French speaking home and we didn't speak Quebec French or standard French. We spoke true Acadian French because most of our traditional songs have been passed on uh, through generations and uh, the fact that Helen Creighton did collect some of our songs is an amazing uh, is an, an amazing treasure that we still have today Là je serai votre serviteur joli Là je serai votre serviteur mesdames Dans ce petit œuf Vous savez pas ce qu'il y a Dans ce petit œuf Vous savez pas ce qu'il y a Un beau petit oiseau Un petit oiseau d'amour joli Un beau petit oiseau Petit oiseau d'amour mesdames Là je serai votre serviteur joli Là je serai votre serviteur mesdames as Nicole said, it has been a privilege to work together and some very beautiful and poignant and difficult things have come from our listening to this collection. And one of the most amazing things about being a part of this project and listening to the material in this way is we've all had our moments of reacting to these voices from the past and to Helen's work as well. And so it's been a privilege to be part of these very profound and deep discussions with these very brave young women. When the boys come to court me, they all swear they love me.
And I never will marry. Till he comes back again. Many a thousand gone, no more pint of salt for me, no more, no more, no more pint of salt for me. Many a thousand Helen's relationship with the African Nova Scotian community was questionable. In Helen's words, on the whole, they are a very nice people to work with. I've always liked our colored people here our colored people here. We have often employed them in the house. Some would argue that Helen was a product of her time. However, we must understand that decency and respect and humanity are not modern creations. spent many, many years listening to archival recordings. It's how I discover a lot of material and um, that I sing myself from my own tradition. But this was definitely something very profound. You know, we're just five people, but we got to know each other's realities in a way that we wouldn't if we hadn't worked on this project together. And it makes me wonder what other projects, what other mediums, what other things can you do with a collection like that or just with those voices. I always look at situations as, you know, we all have something to contribute and we're not all that different, but we still need to celebrate each other's uniqueness and um, diversity in cultures, but we're still very similar. She sings as she flies. She brings us good tidings, and she tells us no lies. She sucks the Mayflower to keep her voice clear, and she only sings. Naomi, My name is Naomi, and I'm from the Mi'kmaq community of Wegoma. Je m'appelle Nicole, à Daniel, à Paul, à Fidel, à Edouard, à Edouard, à Gudok. My name is Nicole, and I am a proud Acadian from Shitikan. My name is Laurel McDonald. My family came to Nova Scotia from England and from Ireland and Scotland and from Germany. My name is Mary Jane, and I am a Gale. My name is K.O. Taylor, and I am an African woman. <laughs> 